Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome back uh, to this live session by Godox uh, on uh, portrait lighting for weddings. Uh, if you are joining for the first time or if you missed my previous workshop, uh, we are going to be focusing on lighting techniques. And uh, categorically today, we are going to talk about wedding portraits. Uh, so those of you who don't know me, I'm Ramit Batra. I am a wedding photographer for the last 12 years. And uh, uh, let me just showcase a little bit of my work and we will get back to dissecting wedding portraits right after this.
All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining again. Uh, today's session is about wedding portraits and uh, lighting wedding portraits. Uh, that was just a small showcase of some of my work. Uh, I'm going to start directly uh, looking at some of the pictures uh, that you guys have commented on and that you asked questions about last time. So let me know if you can see it. All right, so I hope you can see this image. Uh, so a lot of people asked me how this image was lit and uh, you know what and how we can do these kind of things. So I'm um, actually, this is a very simple uh, image to look at and find out what happened in this image, but I'm still going to point out. Uh, so you can see here, there is one light and uh, the second light is coming from behind onto the bride. So uh, these kind of images are very difficult to get because uh, we generally don't have a lot of people uh, during our getting ready sessions. Uh, it is mostly just uh, me and my videographer who is there at, uh, uh, you know, when the bride and groom are uh, getting ready. Uh, so this is lit by one light which was kept uh, right behind the bride, which is not visible. It is pointing on the groom. And uh, the second light, I'll just actually name them one and two. So this is one. Uh, okay, just vanished. So this is one and uh, this is two. So light number one is uh, V1, which is... Uh, on a sphere and it is pointing towards the groom. Uh, the second light is a grid which is pointing towards the bride. So the second light uh, is actually uh, a mix of two lights. You can see that uh, this area is also lit. I'll call this number three. Uh, this is being lit by uh, the makeup artist's uh, uh, screen or uh, you know the bulbs that were there. So this is actually a combination of these three lights uh, that we have done. Uh, this is number two. Yeah. So that is typically how I light up scenes in different layers. But this is a slightly more complex scene. But uh, I would want you guys to, uh, you know, whenever I show more of these images, I would want you guys to look at these images and try to dissect where the light is coming from and uh, what is going on around the scene. So this was the first image. I am going to move to the next one. OK, so a lot of people asked, uh, how do we do lighting during the day? Uh, so it is actually really important to sort of not be restricted uh, to use flash and lights only uh, during the night or during low light. Uh, this is a typical sunset shot. And uh, you know the light during this time is always very low. Uh, this is lit by, OK, let me just draw that. So if we, we have a light here, which is uh you know lighting this thing up so this is lit by a single light uh which again has a sphere on top and uh light here is just used to fill the scene up so we are not using a very strong light here uh we pr again probably just used a v1 here we uh till now we have not used a 8200 so this is just a v1 which is on a sphere and uh it is just lighting up the scene. Uh, during sunset, uh, especially right after sunset, it just gets slightly more dark. So uh, it allows us to sort of use very low light and uh, light up a screen. So if you have any questions during uh, uh, whenever I'm showcasing these images, uh, you can point out. And I'm going to try to read your uh, uh, comments and quickly answer that. 
Amit Puri, we are going to look at different lighting setups today. So uh, I'm sure we'll look at something which has harsh event lights also. So I'm going to move to, uh, OK, this is the third image. Again, this is uh, fairly simple. I'm sure you will be able to sort of see this. Uh, there is one light which is almost visible in the screen. This is right here. So this is our main light. Uh, this is probably a AD400 Pro. Uh, we generally use uh, really strong lights whenever there are dance performances or whenever there is uh, like a Sangeet happening or there is a first dance happening. So we need really powerful lights as backlights. So this is one of the moments where we have put in a 400 uh, Pro on a stand. I generally use it on a heavy duty stand because uh, uh, you know the lighter stands do not take the weight of it. So you have to be very careful. Somebody might knock it off, uh, it might just fall down. So this one is uh, a 400 Pro, uh, approximately on half power. Uh, it is used to sort of light up this screen. Uh, there is confetti happening. Uh, uh, there is a confetti blast which happened here. And this image has been shot from between two wine glasses. So I had two empty glasses in my hand. Uh, I think one of those had a little bit of uh, uh, water or some droplets or some uh, something in it which actually caused uh, a kind of these uh, uh, bokeh that you see on the front. So these are caused by the, uh, the wine glass uh, which had a little bit of water. Uh, the remaining, uh, this area that you see, this entire area is confetti. Uh, we got some confetti really sharp. In fact, the couple is slightly away from my focus. Uh, I know, I'm not sure if you can see it, but uh, the confetti was more uh, in focus. Uh, I think the, the camera got the confetti in focus a little more. But luckily, we had a, a smaller aperture. This was shot at about uh, f4 or f5, uh, some somewhere around that range. So we gen we got everything in uh, in focus. So you, if I zoom in, you can see that even the hair are in focus. So it's not a big deal. But we were lucky that we got the confetti also in focus. Uh, so these are the kind of moments where you need an off-camera flash and you need something which is not in the front. Uh, if I had a front flash all this confetti would be glowing. So uh, this image would have become uh, extremely average, uh, I would say, if uh, we got a front flash uh, going. Uh, in this, I think this is shot on an 85 mm. Uh, and uh, But the lens would actually not matter because we are actually, uh, I would have preferred to have a 2470 or something here uh, because during dances, it is more, uh, uh, you know, it's easier to have a versatile lens. But uh, this is shot with the 85. And uh, I generally use the 85 when I know my team member or my second photographer is using a 1635 or 2470 so that we don't end up missing some shots. Uh, how do you balance ambient light with flashlight? Uh, Himanshu, that is the first rule of learning how to use the flash you need to sort of control the ambient light with the use of aperture and shutter speed and a mix of ISO. So all of those things sort of define how much ambient light you require. Because even if you don't want a lot of ambient light, even if you're keeping ambient light really low, you can actually light up the couple really well by using a stronger flash. So that is typically the correlation. Uh, I think once you study more into aperture shutter speed iso and how much you can take the flash up and down that is the only way to control ambient light uh, during wedding ceremony when we have less time for doing portraits what should we do for creative portrait poses uh, lovely typically creative portrait poses are something of an add-on uh, it is not a requirement by the client but uh, they always want those uh, portraits and stuff so if the client has told you that they want creative portraits, tell them that they 
they will need to give you time if they are not giving you time then it is not your fault and uh, uh, most of the times what happens is during the ceremonies during uh, uh, whenever uh, you know whenever there is an event happening the couple is always late everything is happening at a small like at a slower pace so it is up to you whether you want to push the couple whether you want to tell the couple that you know we need to do portraits and we need to sort of do it right now uh, otherwise if you don't push it they will also be very relaxed and they'll not come forward all right uh, what are the other questions uh, can you show the raw image of this i am just having a set of images right now i will not be able to showcase the raw i have certain other images where i can show you uh, probably uh, unedited images and failed images and i'll show you the final image uh molik uh, is asking whether i use a grid yes i generally use a grid but here we have not used a grid uh the all the images that i've shown you so far have been primarily on a uh, sphere uh we generally use uh these kind of spheres uh which are better than using a bare flash so this is what i generally prefer uh rather than just keeping uh, the flash like that okay uh which use grid uh, which canon lens is used for the purpose male i have I'm, i'm using nikon uh, so i generally use a z6 or a z7 and i use a 35 or 85 for these kind of purposes uh, in this picture i see ray of light you create uh, light room or this is natural light uh, okay so i think uh, vivek dhama is mentioning on the rays of light uh, let me just I don't know if I can undo this. So these rays of light is uh, from the flash itself. This entire thing that is created, this entire thing is created by the flash itself. Uh, this is uh, these are called lens flares, and I don't know if you can see. I have a lens flare going somewhere here in my. screen also right now because um, can you guys see this uh, right here there is a lens flare coming so this is natural light uh, whenever you have a strong backlight and it is very close to the camera lens you will be able to sort of see this uh, okay what are the other question divya is asking uh, thanks divya the oh, and that painting at the back oh okay thank you so much uh how do you funky neon lighting at parties they we will will be covering uh, some party shots as well so you'll have to stick around till later and we'll talk about that uh okay who's next is uh, sir can we do hss with v680 i think you're talking about 860 and xt1 in nikon d750 yes you can do that and i think if you can just google hss with v860 you will get all the information uh it is uh, an exclamation mark uh, which uh, comes on the on the flash and that is high speed uh, sync uh no soft boxes or octa used uh, such an i never use soft boxes or octa during my shoots i uh, it is not impractical i just find it very annoying i like to keep a very low profile i like to keep it very minimalistic because i want to give my clients a great experience i don't want them to be looking at those big boxes and stuff around uh the second reason is it uh, comes uh, uh, with a big problem in video so since we also do video i have to look at uh, you know uh, my videographers request as well so we never use those uh, uh, big soft boxes and stuff so i'm going to move to the next image i think i'll move to uh, certain images which have uh, a little bit of behind the scenes as well so that you are able to uh, look at the images better okay so i am going to start with a very basic image uh, okay so uh, this image is uh, 
you know typical of when we are doing like a pre event photo shoot uh, when we are uh, you know trying to capture the couple before uh, they go in for the ceremony so like lovely had asked how do you get time so you know the best way to do portraits is ask the couple to be ready and uh, if they are if the se if 7 o'clock is uh, let's say the call time for uh, uh, the event nobody is going to turn up at 7 so even if the couple comes at 7 you get about 15 20 minutes to take their portrait so that is always a uh, like a trick that we sort of use to get the couple on time so you can see in this image uh, that it's actually uh, afternoon it's a gloomy uh, evening and uh, you can actually see uh, that's uh, our second photographer she is not our light assistant uh because in most of our complex situations we generally like to have our second photographers or our main photographers help me with the lighting uh because it's always quicker when a photographer is giving you the light so uh you can see that this is the couple and uh this is all very gloomy around uh, it's you can't see the sun and it is all very dull so i'm going to show you what we achieved So this is the final output that we got. So if you can see the difference between the two. So we waited for a boat to come in the screen. So these are just small elements that we kind of added. Uh we have to photoshop uh the my second photographer out of here. So there is no second photographer, there is no flash. and uh, you know the sky and everything the white balance is corrected in this picture uh, one more thing that you will notice in this picture is if i go closer you will notice that it looks like it has been lit from front so uh, this is a little bit of touch up that we have done uh, we have done a little bit of skin touch up here so that it looks like the light is not coming from the side and the light is coming from the front so if you look at this image it is lit up from the side and uh, so you see that this is all lit up but in our final image the cheeks and everything have proper a definition and it looks like the light is coming from the front so these are the kind of things uh, that you need to consider when you are lighting up a screen and uh, you need to make sure that you are taking uh, dummy pictures or empty pictures of the scene so that you know you can photoshop your uh, whoever is uh, helping you with the lights you can photoshop that person out uh, you know if there is uh, like if there is a dull element in the sea like let's say if i did not want this boat or this boat i will probably use a different area of uh, you know when the boat comes in so i can probably replace it with a different shot but uh, what we typically do is we do not spend so much time in creating dummy shots we just create five or six variations of that same particular shot and we just mix and match the front and the back so i am not a big fan of using uh, like photoshopping things from a different picture and then adding elements and stuff like that i'm not a big fan of that so i generally like to just uh, mix and match the four or five pictures that i have created Okay back to questions uh, tell me equipment wise how to use proper and appropriate equipment for best results uh, jaysh whatever equipment you have that is your best equipment i think uh, unless you have like the full set of like the entire range of lenses i can guide you with what you can do and uh, what you cannot but uh, let's say if you just have three lenses which is a 2470 uh 50 mm and let's say if you have uh, uh like a 70 200 so i think that is sufficient to create a picture like this i would probably just go with a 24 70 and you can pretty much do 90% of weddings on a 24 70 and a good light uh because uh, you know weddings have a lot of low light in the evening so having a good light and having a 24 70 is pretty much sufficient to uh take care of everything Satish Kumar yes sir we are going to be putting in a lot of bts uh, have some patience so i'm going to take this next image here okay so this image is uh, 
okay so this is the image that we have kind of we were trying to sort of achieve uh we are on a boat so as you can see that uh it is slightly tricky this is where i don't know if you can see it i'm going to zoom in a little bit so you see that flash that is the flash that uh, i'm showing here so this is where there was a blue light and we put in a flash right there so that we could get because we were not getting some good colors from here uh i wanted to have this uh, a bridge in the background so uh, i mean the movement was i probably had just about a minute to capture this and then uh, i wanted to take a portrait of the couple as well so this is what uh, we ended up achieving this is a close up uh, of what we got uh, because i was not sure if i'm going to get something on on the back or am i going to get some element here so so you know this is uh, a shot that you know we we want to call it a safe shot and we have achieved that basic shot but uh, finally this is what we got so we got a little bit of this bridge uh so we got the bridge we got them kissing and we got this artist also and here the dances are happening which is all in blue so uh this is uh, the kind of layering that i like to do in my pictures uh the artist is lit by a backlight which was kept uh, very close to uh this light uh this light is actually uh, an led which is to create this kind of blue effect so we were getting a very dark blue tint uh, on the on the artist but uh, here you can see that it's all bright this is because we have used a backlight so whenever i use a backlight i always use a 200 pro at least uh, uh, my preference is 400 uh, since this is a thailand wedding uh, we generally have restrictions to carry luggage so i never carry 600s with me uh, so this is always between uh, a choice of 200 pro or a 400 pro this is shot with a 200 pro and uh, this is shot uh, with the bare bulb so with we uh, this is pretty much at very high power because we were also lighting up the scene from the front so there is one light here which is lighting up the scene and this is the backlight which is lighting up the uh, the artist so this is again a kind of layered picture that we have created with multiple tiers of lights but the the biggest restriction that we had was uh, i had to shoot it in uh, you know from this moment till where the ship is right now so this was my only restriction because i could only see the bridge for a few minutes you can see that the bridge is uh, slightly on the top here and when i got the final picture the bridge is like almost on the edge and almost ready to go okay any other questions people have uh, okay are you using native iso of camera or variable iso in different situations uh, uh nayan joshi i generally like to use the minimum iso possible uh i generally don't go beyond 1600 uh the z6 and 7 can handle uh iso which is pretty much noiseless till about z6 and uh, till about 1600 uh so i generally like to keep it in the 400 800 range but uh i sometimes i push it to 1600 also the uh, tell me the use of mag mods and its shapers and all see mag mods and shapers are for creating a uh, very categoric very specific lighting to create uh, uh, you know you can say focused lights so i am going to actually show you a picture with mag mod since you are asking okay all right so this is a picture so this is a picture that we have created with a uh, mag mod uh, this was uh, uh, this was very tricky actually i'll give you like a little bit of what happened in this picture this is the couple who is uh, going to enter their venue 
so they could not go to the venue they could not go to the main screen they could not go anywhere they were like you know we can just hide behind this staircase and if you want some pictures we can just do it here this is a, a typical behind the staircase which is a white wall with a background of a white wall and uh, i was i was really stunned that you know uh, we had about half an hour and we had just a white wall to play with so i was uh, like literally uh, thinking what can we do about it so what we actually did here is uh, the image that you can see so one we put in a mag mod here on the back wall so this is uh, with a blue gel and uh, the second thing that i did was i put a mag mod here again which is uh, so both of these are uh, the back is a v1 the side is a v1 uh, both of these are used to create this blue tint on uh, the walls this is a slightly turquoise gel that we put this is a slightly blue uh, gel that we put i'll call it uh, b and uh, this is uh, i'll call it t and uh, these two are lit up with a third light uh, this is a ad this is a ad200 with a grid uh, we had to change the color tone of uh, what we were looking at because there there was so much color here uh, we could not use uh, the native flash here so we had to actually put in a orange gel on top of the ad200 to get their skin tone right uh, the third thing that we have used is a prism so this uh, reflection that you see the kind of lights or uh, you know a little bit of rainbow that you see is uh, with a prism that is pointing right on my lens uh, this is shot with a 85 again uh, this is a shallow aperture this is not very uh, uh, you know this is not very wide or not very uh, small as well this is somewhere between 2.8 uh, 2.5 or 2.8 so i'm going to show you the picture again i hope you'll be able to see the lights here so this wall is the blue light this is the turquoise color this is the prism and they are lit with uh, uh, ad 200 in the front i did a little bit of freelancing here uh, because uh, i this was an extremely boring frame for me this was i mean given a white wall is uh, you know the worst nightmare for a photographer so i wanted to sort of make it more crazy more fun so this is what we did and uh, we got a little bit of reflection since it was a glossy wall so yeah so this is uh, the kind of so this is how uh, see i'm not a big fan of uh, creating and killing the background i like atmospheric shots so even if i'm using a mag mod i will use it for a larger picture i will not try to kill it and make it high contrasty and you know that is a lot of people like to do that uh, these days uh, they create very high contrasty pictures i'm not a big fan of that i uh, like to create very ambient very airy pictures so this is a typical example of that okay so i'm back to questions uh, how much iso did you use for this pick uh, molik this pick would have been in the 800 range uh, what's the main difference between bulb head and flash head of 8200 pro uh, there are two types of heads uh, both of them are for different uses uh, when i put in uh, the bulb head i can put in a round diffuser on top of it and it becomes more like a um, you can say like a 360 dome kind of a light it spreads everywhere uh, if you are using a flash head, it is more directional, and uh, so that is something that you can use for, uh, let's say, a sangeet performance. You can point it towards uh, uh, the sangeet uh, uh, dance stage, and uh, if you are using uh, the bulb head, it is ideal for, let's say, an after party or something, and you need a backlight, and you don't really know which location you are going to be shooting in. So you can probably, uh, you know, put in there so this is uh, the flash head so this is more directional so if you you you'll have to sort of aim it properly but uh, if you take this out you can actually put in the bulb head here and you can do the changes okay uh 
please show some beach portraits lovely i have to just see i'll i have a couple of other pictures uh, why did you cut the legs off the couple this is the kind of composition that i wanted and i aimed at so this is uh, just my style of how i wanted it it is a personal preference i would say uh please explain ad series light c i think uh, you can probably google or go to the godox uh, website and see the different ad lights uh where did you place the prism to get that effect uh push parshuram uh i can't see a camera with me so let's say if this is my lens and uh, the prism was placed uh, here on one side and the lens was actually taken off uh, i was freelancing so i got a slightly blurry uh, left focus i got the wall uh, out of focus i just wanted to keep the couple sharp in it and uh, the prism was being held by one of my uh, assistants so he was just shaking and moving the prism all around and whenever i would see a good uh, reflection or catch light i would just click the picture Okay, I'm going to move to the next image. So this is all right. So this is one image which we are going to be looking at. So now uh, a lot of people asked me last time uh, how do we actually use lights during the day and uh, for me i think uh, using the flash during the day is as important as using uh, flash during sangeets and night time and you know it it comes naturally uh, when there is low light and you like you know we we have to use flash but when it is daytime uh, a lot of photographers don't want to use flash because they're like you know uh, there is a lot of light we can just boost the iso and just capture the image so here you can see that uh, we are using a v860 and uh, this is uh, this is the key light this is lighting up the couple uh this is a picture of the couple where we don't have the light because we had just placed one backlight here i'll call it uh let's say i'll just call it the backlight so this image would show you how do i carry this okay so this is your backlight and we were just experimenting and we were just changing settings so we have the backlight but we don't have the front light in this one as soon as we got the front light you can see the difference that the background is the same the background everything look at that it is the same we are getting the same amount of colors here the same contrast here but the couple has totally transformed in this one versus this one so that is the difference between using lights during the day and not using lights during the day this little bit of fill adds so much more detail you can see here this is all dark this is all dark and here it's that slight glow that is there on the faces that is really important to sort of make a better picture out of it so the light setup in this one is quite visible uh, you can see there is a uh, there is a uh, 860 here and there is a 860 here so both of these lights are uh, being used differently we are using this one the key light with a sphere and pointed towards the couple the one on the back is being used as a bare flash now why are we using a bare flash because we just need a rim light here and the the, uh, the bare flash can be hidden behind this tree so when i show you my final picture this is actually hidden so i don't have that uh, in my frame which is this one so you can see if i show you the final image it is all well hidden i don't see my front uh, uh, flash as well and we have gotten the perfect picture 
So that is typically how you need to sort of focus on using light for portraits during the day as well, and not just restrict yourself to using the light during evenings. Okay, <clears throat> what are the special features of AD600 Pro? Uh, Kranti, I think you should just get in touch with a Godox tech team. They will explain in detail or just go to the website. You'll be able to see all the details. Uh, where did you, can you help me? I'm new in the field. What flash should I use first? Saga, just get hold of any flash. If you have never used a flash, I think you should start using the pop-up flash on your camera first. Understand the restrictions of it, and then you can move to an off-camera flash. Uh, did you prefer LED video ice light for couple portraits? Uh, Amit Puri, yes. Sometimes we use uh, the ice light. Uh, a couple of our photographers are uh, uh, big fans of using the ice light. It also works for our videos really nice. Uh, I'm not a very big fan of ice light. I prefer uh, powerful lights, and I like to sort of sculpt lights uh, according to my need. But uh, Yes, ice lights can create a lot of uh, uh, fun pictures as well. Uh, rather than gels, uses of other grid shapers and with situations. Jayesh, I have just explained all types of uh, uh, modifiers. I, I have shown you how to use a grid, how to use a bare flash, how to use uh, a modifier uh, like a sphere. And in, in the other images that come, uh, I'll show you the other effects as well. So moving on to more of daylight pictures, let me show you some, uh, okay, here is another set. So this image is again uh, daylight slightly in the shade, but we have used uh, a lot of flash in here. Uh, you can see there is a backlight. I think this should be clearly visible now. So this is the backlight here. And uh, this is, so here we are using a V860 with uh, orange gel. And here we are using from where I'm sitting actually. This is where we are uh, using the main key light. So why we are using uh, orange gel in this uh, is because uh, you know we want to sort of get the skin tone right and uh, if we are changing the white balance uh, to if if the sky is gloomy if everything is already a little warm we tend to move the white balance towards uh, a little more cooler when we do that our light becomes really blue so uh, what we need to do to compensate that is we need to, like the simplest way to do that is just put in an orange gel, make the light warmer so that as you're moving towards the cooler zone, your light is a little warmer and it is reflecting the real skin tone. So that is the kind of, uh, uh, you know, the to and fro you, that you need to do between white balance and your lights. Uh, this is a typical daylight setup and this is what we finally achieved. Uh, this picture is just to sort of show you the kind of setups that we use. Uh, we have gotten a really nice backlight on this and uh, it is very natural. I think you will not be able to judge or see if we actually used a flash here. So that is the kind of uh, work that I like to do. Uh, we call it invisible lighting in which it looks like they are just standing there in nicely lit under the tree or outside. but uh, actually, we are using multiple lights to get this kind of an effect. So lighting is not about always creating a very loud effect uh, of, you know, uh, like if you're using a mag mod or something, you have to create a blue light or a red light and uh, you need that big sphere and uh, create like a silhouette or something. It is not about that. If you understand light properly, you should be able to create natural portraits where somebody cannot make out where the light is. Uh, if you're using two or three lights and they're, if they are blending properly in an image, that is a, a sign of good usage of light. So I'm going to actually show you a couple of other easy examples which uh, Okay, I'm going to show you two sunset examples since uh, a lot of you uh, like to shoot during sunsets and uh, this is the most common query that I get that 
should we make it a silhouette or should we make it a, like a full blown portrait so this is a typical portrait that i would create with uh, let's say a grid and uh, just get the effect on the couple this is lighting up the couple really properly only in a specific zone this is not like the entire couple is not lit uh, this is just to sort of emphasize on the sunset and the couple this is lit by a single ad200 with very high power and on a grid uh, if you look at the scene this is the scene when uh, you know when you're experimenting or when we are looking at the light this is how dark the scene can actually look if you don't get your light proper so this is uh, our final output again if you're looking at a scene or a sunset this is something that you can easily achieve or you can just focus on getting a silhouette so uh, i like to sort of do both the things uh, whenever we are sort of doing a photo shoot i like to do a portrait wherein we are creating a silhouette i like to create a portrait where i'm getting the couple lit up so uh, it is always better better to sort of get both the things sorted at the same time so like if you look at this and this those are two different images and the difference between the two images is one is with a uh, setting of the flash uh, when the flash is actually lighting the couple properly uh, that is this image and the other image is the exact same image same location and we have not switched on our flash we have actually changed a little bit of settings so that we are getting the sky and everything and the couple as a silhouette so uh, it is not always needed that you have to use a flash but it is uh, uh, you know it is always better to not just stick to a silhouette if you create something like this the couple is always going to appreciate it but yes this is a creative picture the couple will be like oh this is very cool and stuff like that so i would always recommend that you create two or three different options at the same location by using different kinds of light so here like we have created a complete light here it's it is more uh, of a grid light this is more of uh, uh, like a spherical light where we have created a full uh, the couple is completely lit up so these are three different uh, lighting setups at the same location okay looking at uh, your questions uh, how can i set 8200 for more than 250 shutter speed uh, murli that is uh, what high speed sync is for a lot of people have been talking about that just uh, you see that exclamation button that is for high speed sync just just find that or google it uh, faster recycle time, more color accurate, powerful. Okay, I'm not sure what you're saying. Give some examples with candlelight, ambient, like candlelight decor. I'll just see if I have some of those. Which light do you prefer for big group and how many lights? Uh, I mean, for big groups, like a stage setup, we generally use two lights, uh, one on each side. And uh, uh, those are very basic. You can just use a sphere on both of those and it just lights it up uh what is the camera setting bishal uh, this is a very basic camera setting this would uh, be metering for the sunset and everything else is going to be dark so this is typically like a f5 f8 kind of a thing around iso 100 uh, this would uh, probably be the same setting with a flash so so that we get the couple properly uh, uh, properly lit up Okay, I'm going to move to the other couple of images. Uh, so one uh, typical example of uh, a portrait setup is what I'm going to show you. So uh, this is an example of portraits that we do at weddings. And uh, sometimes we, uh, you can see that, you know, we are using two lights and uh, uh, my team members are in the frame and it's it's like a very complicated and it's it's just really it by the looks of it it just looks like how am i going to photoshop them out and what are we going to do about it so when we are looking at this we have one light and the second light and since this is one of the test shots uh, there would be a light here where i am standing which would actually light both of them up so this one is uh, on a grid 
the second light is uh, also on a grid and the one which i would also have will be on a grid so we have three lights on a grid uh, because we don't want a lot of spill uh, this light is already spilling here this light is already spilling here so it is actually killing my picture uh, already so if i look at this image uh, this entire thing on the left is being spilled this the entire thing is gone and uh, so to counter this what we do is we take dummy shots uh, we take shots of the same place at the same location and we make sure that uh, we get the same focal length at the same angle right and then we finally merge it into the picture so from this to this is uh, uh, you know what you need to achieve and this is only possible if you are able to sort of take out all the reflections and the flash and you cannot do that if you are trying to create a rim light you see the rim light here that is what i wanted to achieve in this picture and i had to actually remove uh, all the distracting elements including the reflections on the sides and including my team members so this is these kind of pictures are generally uh, helpful when you are taking a series of pictures so like we got one picture we knew that the reflection is coming bad we changed a few settings we changed the we added a couple of color gels in this so you can see that this one is shot on a, a, a on the regular flash here we have put in some blue color gels so to, we are trying to sort of make it a little blue but this also did not work so we finally understood that you know this image is not possible without actually getting the other elements so we finally got the dummy elements from a uh, 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 dummy shot and it's a mix of the top uh, it's a slight uh, out of focus picture which i because i did not want uh, this entire thing to be in focus uh, because it, it will create a very wrong impression uh, so i got one which is slightly out of focus i got one which is in focus and i merged it into the final image uh, which light uh, what is the camera setting okay all that is done uh, flash on ttl mode okay, all the time when we are doing portraits the flash is always always on manual uh, you cannot trust the ttl mode uh, because uh, the camera or the flash are looking at particular things and that is where they judge what kind of light needs to be put out and uh, the scene to be lit up so let's say if the camera is looking at uh, uh, the couple here uh, let's say if the camera is looking right somewhere here uh, sorry i'm not able to draw uh, let's say if the camera focuses here accidentally or the camera is looking here and if i have not locked my uh, exposure balance and the flash is actually going to be very different from what i want uh, the couple to be lit and if my uh, if I, if my backlights which are here uh, if i am using these two backlights which uh, i want them to create a rim but i put them on ettl so they will generally try to just light up the scene properly so i will not get this harsh light so this is if i'm looking at it from behind where the lights are this is going to be about four or five stops overexposed and that is where i'm getting the rim light okay in manual mode hss is possible of course sanjay uh, hss is possible in manual or auto or whatever uh, in slave mode all the modes uh, allow you to have hss uh, mahesh rawal for this particular image it is uh, a wide angle lens uh, we would have used somewhere around a 20 mm for this so this would be a 1430 on a z7 then okay i'm going to move to mode of couple portraits okay so i think we have about 5 minutes left so i'm going to touch uh, maybe one or two more images uh so this is one portrait that i again uh, always uh, talk about that you know whenever we are doing a destination wedding it is very important to capture the destination uh so this is uh, the shangri la bangkok and uh, 
if you have been here or if you have crossed the bridge and if you have seen Shangri-La, because this is a, a very prominent uh, landmark there, uh, this is a riverside property. So as soon as you step down, there is a small um, sort of uh, like a, a beach, you can say, which is actually hard ground and there is a river right behind it. So if you go down to the, uh, to the hotel, you cannot actually get the view of Thailand or you cannot get the view of the hotel. So to get both of those things, you have to go to one of the balconies or you have to actually be in the room to sort of look out. So this is uh, one of the images that I created. Uh, this is, like I said, I always take a combination. One is uh, lit up, one is uh, uh, like a silhouette shot, but uh, when I have done my test shots and when I've gotten to you know what I wanted, uh, this is the final composite or uh, this is the final uh, angle that I wanted because uh, it is not just the light that you're looking at. You're also looking at other things uh, like you are looking at the background here. You're looking at leading lines. You're looking at the gaps in between. So uh, this one is more like a first test shot and you're like, oh, I've gotten everything right. Uh, I think I need to change the angle. Your flash is pretty much around the ballpark. You probably need to reduce it a little bit. Uh, then by the time you are uh, you are adjusting the settings, you take a silhouette quickly because this light is going. And then you actually try to get a picture like that. So now uh, in this, you know, you can see the leading lines. You can see the sky. And uh, we have one flash here. Uh, this is again lit up uh, with a V860 uh, with a grid. Uh, see the how you can make out whether we have used a grid or whether we have used a sphere is see the fall off. In a grid, the fall off is going to be very high. So this is going to be well lit, and then suddenly it is going to get dark. That is a typical char characteristic of using a grid. If you use uh, a sphere, it is going to be more uh, well lit. So this is where we have used a sphere. If you look at this image. We have a light, sorry, where the camera is. And you can see that the fall off is all the way. You can see the kurta. You can see all the way to the bottom. But in this image, you cannot. Uh, this is a typical change when you are using a sphere and then you quickly want to sort of change it. Oh, I think you cannot see the screen. I'm so sorry, guys. I've just been talking like a fool. So sorry. OK, I'm going to get back to this. All right, sorry. Sorry about this. OK, so I'm going to repeat this. This is uh, like this is when I started the picture. Uh, this is when we are looking at the picture, and uh, we have one light. And uh, we have a sphere on uh, top of a V860. This is more like the first test shot that I'm getting. And uh, I hope you're able to see the image now. Can somebody say yes if they are able to see the image? Uh, are you able to see the image now? OK, so this is the sphere. And uh, this is actually lighting up the couple pretty much. So this is more of a test shot where I can uh, sort of judge about you know, how my composition is going to be, what area do I need to keep the couple so that the buildings are not distracting me, what are the leading lines. So you know, all that calculation is happening and the sky and everything. And then immediately, I move to creating a silhouette while I ask my assistant to you know, quickly change the sphere to a grid because the sphere is creating a lot of spread of light. So you know, while I do that, I don't want to waste time and I don't want my couple to be standing and waiting. So my assistant has now gone and gotten the grid. And we have changed the light to a grid. So again, we have a light. And I was mentioning, I think we lost the screen that time. How do you make out whether this is a grid or not? So when you see the light and you see the fall off, you need to understand whether the person is using a grid or a sphere. You see here, the fall off is very little. You can see all the way till the kurta and the jacket and everything. 
here the fall off is so much that as soon as this area which is lit up everything else just suddenly becomes dark this allows me to sort of not have light on the railing not have light on this uh, uh, top of the building and stuff like that now i have done my composition so you can see that there are no buildings which are distracting me here so it's, it's like a clean shot if i come back to the first image there is one building which was distracting me so i have changed my composition i have gotten the leading lights i have i'm getting all the cars and everything nicely reflected so you know this is a proper picture for me this is what i would say a one light setup wherein uh, you know the couple has probably given me 3 or 4 or 5 minutes and they like you know quickly make a picture so that we can go uh, so i've already done two pictures i've done a silhouette and i've done a proper shot now what else can i do here i have one assistant i have one light and i, I quickly want to do it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just turn them around and let us have the backdrop be the building now so you know it just totally transforms the picture it is exactly the same pose and it has totally changed the background it has made the you can you know you can see the sky is very different because the sun was setting here somewhere and uh, here there is no light in the sky but i'm still getting that blue tint in the sky uh i'm getting the shangri la building in the backdrop i'm getting a little bit of uh, lights here and i'm getting my grid is lighting up the couple properly i'm not getting too much of distracting railings and stuff so this is typically how we uh you know create pictures on the go and this is uh, because this uh this you know you remember i showed you the cruise pictures of the ship so we could actually see the ship passing uh, uh we were going to be on top of this and uh, i saw this and the groom was like hey that is our uh, boat and you know uh, i thought let's take a picture of him uh, when the boat is also there in the frame so this is all the fun you can do with lights it is it doesn't necessarily need to be all fancy and all uh, you know you have to create like the side light or different colors and silhouettes just natural lighting just lighting up the scene so that you know the ambience is well lit is very important and that is almost uh, more than sufficient okay coming back to a couple of questions uh, uh one situation where you face critical to set up uh, sathis uh, all situations where there is not sufficient light is always critical where you need to definitely uh, put in some lights uh thank you thank you guys uh, are you using attachments with the flash in this image yes we keep using attachments did you have you used the orange gel on not in this picture this picture was uh, the regular we have not used any gels in the balcony picture that i have just shown you i'll just show this to you again in this we have not used uh, any gel uh, because the sky is already blue the sun is setting and uh, you don't need a filter at this time you don't need to change the color of the light at this time so i think i'm going to take one last picture uh, uh, some a lot of people ask me about my uh, crazy dance pictures and cocktail pictures so i think i'll just end on this uh, particular picture i think somebody had asked me earlier so uh, these are pretty much pitch dark situations where uh, you know all the components that we have talked about and off camera flashes uh, ad 200 and stuff all that can be set aside this picture is simply a flash on the camera this is on camera flash like a v860 or a v1 uh, with a grid or a sphere depending on my uh, settings typically this is a long exposure where we have just done a camera shake and created this picture with uh, a typical flash pointed at the couple so this is we are uh, you know our couples recognize us uh, uh, with these kind of pictures and uh, this is very simple and this is just a long exposure uh, one the second setting that you need to remember is this has a flash on top of the camera 
and uh, the third thing that you need to remember is this has a very shallow aperture like a f8 or f11 and uh, that's it you uh, once you have your you, once you tweak with the settings and you are able to get this kind of picture if you cannot uh, buzz me on instagram or facebook wherever you can find me i'm uh, ramit batra photography on instagram so if you have any questions you can drop in there uh, i get a lot of questions so i might be a little slow in replying but i'll be happy to sort of reply to that okay last few questions here uh, Power of the flash for this pic, power will be at full power. Uh, Mohammed, if you can see this picture, this will always be at full power. Uh, does the light fall off matter between 860 and V1? Uh, Himadri, the light fall off of 860 and V1 is almost uh, the same. V860 has a slight boxish kind of fall off. Uh, V1 has a more round fall off because of their head uh, shapes as well. But uh, if you're using both of the flash with a grid or with a sphere, I think it should not matter. All right, then. Uh, thank you so much uh, for having me here, guys. Uh, it has been a pleasure. Uh, I think this was the second of the two sessions that I wanted to do uh, and we have done with Godox. Thank you so much, Godox, for having me here. Uh, I will keep you posted. If there are any other workshops, I will be in touch and we'll do the announcements here. Thank you so much, guys.